Now we're at the point where we can write the main for our bank main and possibly close things up. We're not going to implement this entire uh, object here because most of the aspects of it are fairly simple. It's printing out and then reading stuff back in. In fact, I even went ahead and already typed in the menu that we're going to use for this. So there are nine main different options and then a number 10. And so inside of our main, what we want to do uh, is we're going to have a while loop and the user is going to type in some option which will be an integer and while that's not equal to the exit to end we'll keep going that option is going to come we need to declare it we'll start off at zero and then we can give our users the menu that they're going to see then we can read in option equals read int now I'm about to get a line through that because once again I do not yet have the import in here import io.stdin.underscore and that will allow me to read things and then I want to do a match on this so we'll have a case for one, two, three, four, five, etc. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then anything else. If they give us anything else, we'll inform them that's not an option. Okay, so let's go back down here and look at what are our options. We can create a customer, we can select a customer, we can create an account, we can close an account, we can select an account, deposit to an account, withdraw from account, check account balance, change address. Part of the idea in this design and the reason why there are these select options is we're going to store a customer. Actually, we're not going to store a customer, we're going to store an option for a customer because at least to start off with, we don't have a customer yet. So let's create a var. Note that because this is inside of main, this isn't, we, it isn't public, it's not private, doesn't have visibility, it's just a local variable that is called customer. And customer is going to be an option of customer that will start off as none. I'm going to do the same thing for account. Which will be an option of account. Okay. Also in order to make this whole thing work, I'll probably need to create a bank. So let's go ahead and let's val bank equals a new bank. And we'll instantiate the bank class that we just finished writing. Now what? Okay, so now we can probably start filling in these different options. Now, we could do this in one of two ways. I could put all the code for creating a customer right here in case one. That makes me feel uncomfortable because then we're gonna have this really long main method I'd rather break the problem into smaller pieces, and so I'm actually interested in having a private method called create customer. And we need to pass it the bank that we are working for, that we're working with, because otherwise we wouldn't have that information. And when we build the customer, they need to be part of the new bank. Our bank has an add customer and so that information is going to have to be passed in there and I want this so that when it comes when we're done with it it gives us back the customer that was created and the reason for doing that is because then we can make it so that when a customer is created they became they become the customer that we are remembering okay so 
this method, and this is why I'm not going to spend the time implementing all of these different methods. This method here is largely just going to print some stuff out. What is the customer's first name? And then we can have first name equals read line. We'll ask for their last name. And make a variable for that. Now we need to add their address. Well, so we can prompt for that the same way. What is the customer's address? But reading that in is going to be a little bit different because the address potentially spans multiple lines. So I can't just do a single read line here. And I don't know is their address going to be two lines, three lines, four lines. Uh, as you're probably well aware, addresses can vary dramatically. So what do I have to do? Well, I have to somehow have the ability to read in multiple lines. And here again, I want to break the problem down. I could put that code right here, but it might actually be useful to have that code in a method called read address that is supposed to read an address and give it back to us. We can go ahead and stub that out here, private def read address. It doesn't need any inputs. It's going to give us back an address. And at least for now, we'll say it is something we will implement. Once we have all of those things, we can do bank dot add customer, first name, last name, address. Does our add customer for our bank? Our add customer does not currently give us back the customer. It would be very helpful to us if they did. We could use a find method to get the customer, but that would that would just be extra effort that we really don't need. an equal sign and let's see if all that's happy okay so now our bank gives back a customer when we create one in addition to adding it to the list and our main is happy because when we create the new customer that gets passed back so what would need to happen up here well we would need to call create customer in addition to calling and we have to pass it to the bank in addition to calling create customer we need to store the customer that we get back in our customer variable up here. Now, it doesn't work just to say customer equals create customer because these have different types. This actually gives us back a customer, always, and this is an option of customer. So I need to wrap that option inside of a sum to make this happy. Okay. Option number two, what do we have here? Selecting a customer. So this should go through and find the customer we have. Much like the option before it, when we're selecting it so that we can store it, we'll select a customer on the bank, and then we can come down here and we can write that. Select customer, bank, is a bank returns actually this one is going to return option of customer because when they go to type in whatever it is that they're doing to select it it might not work um, now in the case of our customer we have two ways of selecting them we built them into our bank we can find customers either based upon IDs or names so we could ask our user do you want to find the customer by name or ID. And so they are supposed to type in either name or ID here. Option equals read line. Okay. And we need an if. If option 
is name. Then we're going to do one thing, else we're going to do another thing, and both of these need to give back an option of customer. Well, if they say name, then we need to ask for a first name and a last name. Well, you know what? We already have some code that does that. So I'm going to go ahead and borrow that. And we can use the bank's find customer on first name and last name. And find customer returns an option of customer, which is exactly what we wanted. Otherwise, what is the customer's ID? Thou ID just read line and then we can give back bank dot find customer on that ID and there we go okay so those are happy implementations of option one and option two I'm not going to spend the time to to go through writing all of these in the video uh, for the most part they're fairly simple and straightforward once we have them all written, we can test things out. And one of the things that we haven't done, we have not verified that any of this code that we've written actually works. We haven't even really written the address yet. So there are some things that are missing. I'm going to implement these. I'll put them up in the GitHub repository for this video series so that you will be able to, to look at full implementations. But the key takeaway messages from this video playlist are how we break down the problem, how we went through and did a, an analysis of what it is that we wanted to be able to do in our program. And you'll note that we have, our main has each of these, as well as some other things as the options that the user can do. Then we took that design or that, that analysis and we built a design for it. We thought about the classes that we wanted to have, what types of information and methods were in those, our design wasn't perfect. We realized that we needed some more information for at least one of the methods. It was pretty good. When you're doing designs since you're just starting out, odds are your designs won't be that good. You'll, you'll miss more stuff and then you'll have to add it in. That's fine. That's not a problem. And then we took that design and we used it to actually build the code. And, and when you do this decomposition, you should think about what are the entities, whether you think of them as nouns in the description of the problem, or whether you think of them as the, what is responsible for certain response, for basically responsibilities. What are the various responsibilities in the program and can you group them in ways that have a logical structure? That should inform how you break the problem down in an object-oriented way. And then the fact that we want the methods that we put in here to really relate to the class that we've created. Anything that happens with an account should be inside of account. Anything that happens with a customer should be inside of a customer. That's how you want to approach your object decomposition and building object-oriented programs.